square root radicals can be divided. A general rule for dividing radicals is if variables a and b represent non-negative real numbers, then the square root of a divided by the square root of b is equal to the square root of a over b. We have to specify here that b cannot be equal to zero. Remember, we can't have zero in the denominator of any fraction. Any number divided by zero is undefined. Sometimes when dividing radicals, we end up with a perfect square. Let's do an example. We're asked to divide the square root of 392 by the square root of 2. The square root of 392 divided by the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 392 divided by 2. 392 divided by 2 is equal to 196. But 196 is a perfect square. And the square root of 196 is equal to 14. So 14 is our final answer. Expressions with variables can also be divided. We're asked to divide the square root of 15x squared y by the square root of 5x. This is equal to the square root of 15x squared y over 5x. If we divide both the numerator and denominator by 5x, we end up with 3xy in the numerator. So the final answer is the square root of 3xy. When dividing radicals, we must always write final radical expressions in their simplest form. In order to do this, the following three requirements must be met. Firstly, the radicand is neither a perfect square nor a multiple of a perfect square. In both of these cases, it can be further simplified. The second requirement is the radicand cannot be a fraction. And the third requirement is there can be no radicals in the denominator. If there is a radical in the denominator, we get rid of it by a process we call rationalizing the denominator. We'll do an example to show you how this works. We're asked to simplify the square root of 7 over the square root of 5. Because there's a radical in the denominator, we must rationalize the denominator. We start this by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 5. Because the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 is equal to 1, this does not change the value of the expression. The square root of 7 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 7 times 5. And the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 5 squared. So we're left with this expression. Now we simplify. The square root of 7 times 5 is the square root of 35. And the square root of 5 squared is just equal to 5. This is our final answer. The square root of 35 cannot be simplified and there's no longer a radical in the denominator. Here's the whole solution to this problem. If you like, you can pause the video and review the steps. We can also rationalize the denominator in expressions containing variables. We'll show you how to do that as we work through this example. We're asked to simplify the square root of 5 over the square root of 24ab squared. We assume that a and b are both greater than zero. We can't have a zero in the denominator, and we can't take the square root of a negative number. We can factor 24 to 4 times 6. We'll rearrange this radicand so the perfect squares 4 and b squared are on the left side, and the leftovers 6 times a are on the right. We'll split this radical into two separate radicals, the square root of 4b squared times the square root of 6a. The square root of 4b squared is 2b. So we're left with this expression. We'll continue our solution up here. There's a radical in the denominator, so we must rationalize the denominator. We do this by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 6a. Looking at the numerator, the square root of 5 times the square root of 6a can be simplified to the square root of 30a. And looking at the denominator, the square root of 6a times the square root of 6a is equal to the square root of 6a squared. The square root of 6a squared is just 6a. So we're left with the square root of 30a over 2b times 6a. 2b times 6a can be simplified to 12ab. So our final answer is the square root of 30a over 12ab. 
30 cannot be factored into any perfect squares and there's no longer a radical in the denominator. Here's the whole solution to this problem. If you like, pause the video and review all of the steps. Sometimes a binomial containing a radical appears in the denominator of an answer. In this case, it can be rationalized by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, and then simplifying until the expression can no longer be simplified. Remember the shortcut for multiplying a binomial by its conjugate is a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. We'll show you this with an example of dividing with radicals. We're asked to simplify 6 plus root 3 over root 2 plus 3. Notice there's a radical in the denominator, so we must rationalize the denominator. We do this by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is root 2 minus 3. We use FOIL to expand the numerator. Take a few seconds to work through this on your own. So we're left with this expression. 6 times 3 is 18, and root 3 times root 2 is root 6. So we'll simplify the numerator a bit, and rearrange it so the radicals are together, followed by the number. And we'll continue this solution up here. Notice the denominator is the binomial root 2 plus 3, times its conjugate root 2 minus 3. Recall the shortcut for multiplying a binomial by its conjugate is a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. So root 2 plus 3 times root 2 minus 3 equals root 2 squared minus 3 squared, leaving us with this expression. Root 2 squared is 2 and 3 squared is 9. So we're left with this. 2 minus 9 equals negative 7. So we have this. Instead of having the negative sign by the 7, this can be written as this, with the negative sign in front and a positive 7 in the denominator. Nothing in here can be simplified further, and there's no radical in the denominator. So this is the final answer to this problem. Here's the whole solution to this problem. If you like, pause the video and review each step on your own. Thank you.